Hello and welcome back to part 16 of this web series. So uh, in this episode we're not going to be doing any HTML and CSS. We're actually going to be looking at uh, how we set up the database side uh, of the actual website. So if I just go over to Visual Web Developer and at the moment I've got the following pages open. So the default, the style and the master page. So like I said, we're not going to be focusing too much on these today. Uh, what we will be doing is looking over here on the right hand side, there's this button up here, which you probably can't see the text, it's probably gone off the screen. Uh, it's called ASP.NET Configuration. So it's this one with like a, a hammer and what looks like to be a globe. Uh, I don't know who comes up with these images, but yep, that's the one you want to click on. So if we click on that, you will then get the website administration tool that pops up. So in here, this is where we set up the database, uh, initial users, uh, the roles, which are basically like groups, uh, and all that good stuff. So, so what we want to do is go into the security section. So by default, the authentication type is set to Windows authentication. So like when you log into your PC, we don't want that. We need to change this. So we go to the select authentication type. So at the moment, it's set to from your local network. So like I said, that's the Windows authentication, which we don't want. So we want the, uh, the, the typical login password uh, sort of system, which is basically this one here. So from the internet. Uh, select this option if users will access uh, your website from the public internet. Users uh, will be required to log on using a web form. The site will use forms authentication. So this is what we're going to be using to identify users according to user information that is stored in a database. So since we changed it to this, this is going to set up the database for us. Uh, so we don't have to. So it's a really nice uh, wizard driven sort of system uh, to set this up. So we've selected from the internet and we'll click on done. So we've now changed that and you can now see here we have a users group and we have the option to create a user. We also have an option to manage users. Uh, next to that we have the roles. So this is like I said the groups. So for example we can create administrators group. So you could have two or three people who have full access to the whole website to the certain sections that administrators have. And then you have a user's role, which is just standard users who come along, register, and they get to see the standard sort of things. And then this section on the end, access rules, is for locking down certain sections of your site. So, for example, if you have a members area, you can lock that down to only the users group and the administrators group. So anyone who's anonymous, who isn't logged in, won't be able to get into that section uh, and have a look around because it's all locked down with security. So I'm going to create myself a user to start with. So click on create user and then I'm going to give myself a username and then the password and then just confirm the password and then email address. If I can spell it correctly. So the security question, just favorite color and then I'll just put in blue and then there's a tick box here for active user so just leave that as it is and click on create user okay so I need to make a stronger password than that so I'll change it and then create user again and you can now see that's now created the user for me so complete your account has been successfully created and you'll notice next to it roles are not enabled at the moment so we'll click continue uh, just get rid of that. <clears throat> so if we go back, so as it says here, we've got an existing user of one, which is fine because that's the, the account we'll use to test the system. If we go to roles here, we'll enable roles and then we'll come in and we'll create two roles. So administrators and then click on add role. So we've done that one. We'll click, we'll create a users, oh, we'll create a users role and add that one. And we'll leave that like that for now. So like I said, we've added all of that in now. The create access rules, we'll, ch we'll change that later on when we get more uh, involved with everything. So now we can just basically close down the web browser. And that brings us back to our application. So we've added all that in, but we don't actually see any changes anywhere. Um, so what you have to do 
if you come up to this icon here, which is the second one in from the left in the Solution Explorer, and hit Refresh, if you look below my mouse, you'll see something appear. So there you go, you can see this App Data folder. So if I just drop down the little arrow next to it. So this is the actual uh, Express database that was created uh, by using that wizard. So if we double click on this, you can actually see here's all the, the information that's actually stored inside of the actual database. And we've got a tables uh, section here. And then if I just pull this out a little bit so you can see it. So it says ASP.NET underscore membership. So this is where you store all of your users. So if I right click on that and go to show table data, a new window will pop up. So as you can see here, we've got one entry. Uh, this is the one we just created. Uh, and if I come along, you can actually see here's the email address that I supplied. And you can see here's the favorite color that I put for the security question. And the password here, which has obviously been hashed out so you can't see that. Uh, so basically this is the, the, the database that it creates. So we haven't had to do any of that. It's done that all for us. We probably won't have to go in here very often. Um, so you can just close that out and then just basically click back here to the Solution Explorer, which brings you back to the actual site. So now that we've actually got the database in place, we now need to start adding um, some of the controls onto the actual website um, so we can then interact with the database and get it all working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the video here for now. Uh, I'm going to create some more videos and get these uploaded as soon as I can. Uh, so as usual guys, thanks for watching. Please leave any comments below. Feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.